So we're on the last stints. We're on the home run. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. So uh, I'd like to welcome Tunde from the University of Liverpool, who's going to be talking about uh, designing and developing digitally fluent professionals. So I shall hand over to Tunde. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to talk to you about is um, my PhD joy, probably on the scale of 8, 9, 10. Last Biz busyness of happy busyness in the last few years. And um, I, I have posed a question for the title because it's not a straightforward question. It's something that, uh, you know, what, working out what digital fluency or digital capabilities in a particular discipline is something that we all have to work with. And, just in terms of introduction, I'm a, a, an educational developer and stroke learning technologist at the University of Liverpool. So my role um, is a central role where I would be working with program teams and advising them on how to embed digital capabilities in the curriculum. So really the PhD has, has grown out of this problem of how to um, you know, and, and kind of nicely builds on what I'm going to talk about, what uh, Heather and Gareth Bros mentioned about talking about digital capabilities in the curriculum, in courses. Um, and so, so I would be talking to uh, program teams on, on how they can embed digital capabilities, whether it's engineering, management, history, and that, that sort of things. And I'm sure in your, if you're similar central roles, you can relate to the experience or the idea that in a program teams you might have, and I quite like this categorization, enthusiasts, um, people, academics who are enthused about digital technologies and take them, embrace them, people might be, others might be more pragmatists, and risk averse. Um, so have a think, so I suppose my question in asking this is how can we get those people on board with digital technologies who might not necessarily get excited with things about, I don't know, uh, some of the lovely uh, technologies we heard here today, AR, VR, or even just if we talk about lecture capture, uh, VLE baseline and some of the, so I think what I was trying to get at is what is the passion that drives people, academics, from their disciplinary perspective that we can work with when we work with them, working out what digital capabilities are. So that was really a long introduction, <laughs> a long preload of how I have gone about it. So really, what I was sharing is not necessarily my PhD findings, because that would take you a lot longer and you wouldn't be able to get home, <laughs> but uh, uh, is, is more the process of my research inquiries, I think what you, perhaps if that's one thing you can take away from this today is how I've, so what I'm going to share with you is really my research process, my interview questions that perhaps are, are applicable to other disciplines and, and see and also just hear your feedback about it, whether this is this something that could work for you. So in my uh, PhD, I, I um, chose two disciplines that were relatively applied. So because this was because I wanted to talk to employers and professionals who are working uh, as engineers and managers. So that's why I've gone for more professions uh, in terms of my inquiry, and two was enough for me to manage. So, and also I selected ones that I didn't have anything, um, I didn't really know anything about. And so for me, the joy was really learning about what makes them tick and what, what excites them. So um, in terms of what I'm going to, to cover is really my research process is a combination of uh, the digital capabilities lens or the framework, the GISC framework that I don't, don't actually have to, thanks for Heather for setting that up so nicely because I don't need to repeat that now. And I combined it with a disciplinary lens signature pedagogies that I will talk a little bit about. And that kind of forms the, my research process. And I will talk a little bit about some of the curriculum implications. Um, and um, there is a plus one which might be a home takeaway for you as a freebie. Um, the uh, digital capabilities, again, had a really nicely um, clarify, so I don't really need to, to mention again that I'm not really talking about functional or technical skills, but how they are um, in terms of subject specific uses. So that, that's the, the take on that I'm, I'm looking at. 
In terms of research evidence, so again, we had some lovely presentations earlier that talked about some of this stuff. But um, the reason why I focus on the curriculum, so what happens in the classroom and not perhaps on extra and co-curricular, because this is what all students have experienced too. And also because if you look at the literature, the, the, and, and again, that was covered today, that digital capabilities are described as a multifaceted moving target. Once we set out to define them, they have already changed. So that's why we need to constantly keep thinking about how we update the curriculum to keep in touch with those changes. And that's why this process of working out what they are is, is probably useful. And also literature shows us that embedded models are very effective, or more, probably the most effective model out of uh, perhaps the, the other ones where you might get digital capabilities separately from your subject knowledge, um, and that's, I mean, and, and that's probably come across earlier as well. And also it's inclusive, if you talked about accessibility, inclusivity earlier as well, because then every student has experiences that. And in, in fact, the two years ago, you signed a report, but again, Gareth mentioned it today as well, there is more research that needed to show how these are integrated in particular subjects. So whether it's engineering, management, and so on. The other thing we know about students, and again, that won't come as a surprise to you, is um, that if you want them to be academic chameleons, so adopt some of the academic rigor and subject um, knowledge, then um, we know that students are very proficient in terms of their technology use, but have a harder time adapting to, to that. So whether it's about being able to critically evaluate resources or tools, or how they might use some of the technologies in their discipline. And we also know that they are very much guided by tutors and the curriculum in their technology adoption. So if something is, is part of the curriculum, they're more likely to adopt it, or the tutor recommends it, they're more likely to adopt it. So that, that's another reason why we're looking at um, digital capabilities within the curriculum. And I won't go through this, because again, uh, I don't have too much time, but just to show you in terms of the gap in research that I was, was aiming to, to fill with my study is taking the lovely and really lots of literature around digital capabilities and generally lots of frameworks and studies that looked at it in, in detail and they're brilliant. Um, and they tend to be more the generic, but emphasizing that we also need to look at it from a disciplinary perspective. There's lots written, and I will talk about signature pedagogies in a min minute uh, around disciplines, but there, is very, there are very few studies that cover the, the intersection. And if someone is interested, there is really good study in construction, um, engineering or management, and the other one is really just studies in the Venn diagram uh, there that um, I, I really liked and enjoyed. And I, won't, I don't have time to go about, uh, into detail about it. Technology enhanced learning, which I see sort of as a subset of digital capabilities. Um, but Bell Shaw had a thesis uh, a few years ago, and then one of the things that he concluded is co-constructing what digital capabilities mean for engineers, musicologists, historians, is, is uh, the apart from the definition, the process of, of doing this with academics, with uh, similar people like in my role, is, is as much as important in terms of the outcome. Okay, so, um, so this is where I want to take you really, is, is my interview questions and how I analyze some of the documents relating to engineering and management to come up with what it means to be digitally capable, um, to be a digitally capable engineer or manager. So, and uh, that's where I thank Heather for <laughs> setting this up. So um, I used the GISC framework in looking at um, the two disciplines and asking questions of, so I basically interviewed academics, I looked at module, program, handbook, subject benchmarks, talked to students, a subset of the students, and also interviewed uh, engineers and managers. And what I was trying to get at is, is where the digital might exist in the learning outcomes, assessment tasks, um, and teaching learning activities, and then try to categorize them according to the framework. So what you will see here is a very rough, and, and my study was quite, I mean, it is a small scale, it's, I, I don't mean it to be representative. My interest was really in the quality and what things um, 
what decision-making engineers are using when they're choosing certain technologies or what um, same, same in academia and try to then map the, the most important ones. So what you see is, is basically a shaded highlight of the technologies that engineers in um, higher education and in the workplace use. So you will see a lot of the you know, simulation modeling, 3D CAD, they are very technology heavy and they use or they do a lot of collaboration and communication because engineering is, as you will see, is a very collaborative discipline. And there's a lot that also happens around looking up uh, information, patent information and, and so on. Um, this, the same thing with managers, again, um, you know, this is where the overlaps can be quite messy. So one of my findings is that, you know, what counts as, I don't know, communication, collaboration is also then information lit or media literacy. So that's what you see the messy overlap trying to, <laughs> trying to um, visualize. In terms of managers, it was interesting to see that as, as higher up you go on the ladder, the less specialized in terms of their software use they become. And many times it's about using information and data sources like Excel and Microsoft tools, also some of the stuff for communication. And a lot of times what they do is communicate. So they communicate findings or evidence or, or for decision making. Uh, I also looked at marketing. So there was a marketing module and obviously they use a lot of social media. Um, so, okay, so having, having done this analysis or description of the digital practices according to the framework, so, but my interest is in how can we, you know, how can we check this? What does this mean for the discipline, for, for engineering or for management? And um, how do we know that these are the right capability elements? So, this, I also say that with the proviso that these are, you know, a subset, these are four modules, they're not, um, picture of a true one single program. So um, I think that you need to also bear that in mind. But so I needed some other angle where I can, can look at what it means from a disciplinary perspective and what can we then say when we when to talk to these people about are you missing something or, or are there things that you can think about. So then um, um, the way I set up the study from, from day one, so although I presented you in a reverse order. The, the other lens I was using is signature pedagogies, which is um, by Schulman. I don't know if you know him, but he's, I suppose he's the father, if you know the TPAC framework, yeah? So he, he's the one who basically come up, come up with it with, before the T was added to it. So the pedagogy content knowledge. But what he says about signature pedagogies and that particularly um, he he thought of this concept when he was looking at applied professions such as medics, lawyers, engineers, when there is a clear trajectory of a professional route for them and looked at the signature pedagogies, the signature activities that characterizes um, the, the, the education. So for instance, when he coined it around 2005, he was talking about um, you know, medicine having bedside teacher, teaching as a, or architectures having the Crete studio as a way of teaching. And the, the other thing that you might notice, so I think that was my interest, is finding out what those are. And if you look at the date, it's 2005, so a lot has happened since he coined this phrase in terms of the digital arena. So that was another interest of mine, is to look at how these signature pedagogies might have changed. I mean, if you look at even just medicine, a simulation and VR is, is quite an interesting development there. So the questions here that I was asking my uh, interviewees, um, wh whether they were the engineers or the engineering academics, is to, to get at what makes their discipline tick, is, is what are the characteristics of a good engineering or a management student. So that was uh, really interesting to find out. And what do you think the distinct methods are uh, that you perhaps don't see anywhere else on campus? So I was trying to get at what, what those disciplinary characteristics are. And then out of this, um, again, just very briefly of, of how I come up with this. So Schulman identifies three layers in terms of signature pedagogies. Um, but I, I don't have time to go into too much big detail, but basically what engineers told me is that they are creative problem solvers who are curious, 
um, <coughs> working globally and solving problems for the human good. And a lot of the way they do this is by science and mathematics, and realization may basically means application. And um, the way they use this is typically through collaborative open-ended projects from day one. So the reason why uh, it, this will be important is that I will then relate it back to digital capabilities. And if you look, the, look at the same thing in management, uh, this was actually a lot more varied because management has a vast range of sub-disciplines from finance, accounting, um, which are quite numeric to human resources and some, some of the more humanities areas. So I think that's a, a lot harder to define, but a lot of the, the characteristics that they were telling me were about resilience, adaptability, dynamism, enterprise. And what management uh, students do is a lot of application of theory and subject and transferable skills, which is why uh, we pinch those from them as well commercial awareness, and they do this through a wide range of activities, through case studies, employer engagement, and so on. Okay, so I've got my digital capabilities and what people do, what engineers do, what the students do in the curriculum, and I also know a little bit more about how, you know, what makes engineers tick, what they, what they get excited about. So then what does this mean for digital capabilities? Are we able to look at signature? And I, I kind of went with the idea of signature digital capabilities because it's what the students develop rather than what the teachers do. And um, another question that I asked of people is, is, can you describe a digitally capable professional in engineering or in management? And again, that was really interesting to get a sense because they, they can give various answers to that. Um, but the, the, really the question that I, I felt really opened the gate and um, ignited some sparks in people's eyes um, was, was this, and I think I, I quite like, so I pinched this question from Slink, Sinclair study, um, because this is where, so for instance, recently I talked to an archeologist and we were talking about all the previous questions before, and, uh, but it's really when, when I asked this question, so he was thinking about what we can do to build in digital capability in your, your discipline in archaeology. And when I asked this question, I think previously he was thinking, okay, it's lecture capture, it's really baseline and so on. But when I asked this question, this was, oh, we could do that. Um, so so that, that's why, so this question around the significant digital developments that have transformed or disrupted, because both are I interesting in their own ways, was really I think a question that led to some insights for, for people and for me as well. Okay, so where, where are we? Uh, I mean, in terms of my findings in, in the study, so I also then compared similarities and uh, differences between the two disciplines. And basically my conclusion is that um, these really influence, I mean, perhaps it's quite logical and it should be like that, but the signature pedagogies of particular disciplines will um, influence the digital capabilities. So for instance, if you look at um, um, engineering, which was quite a collaborative. So one of the key things that they say, we get students from day one to collaborate, and hence the, the digital collaboration communication bit of the, of the framework is quite well populated. Again, this is an abridged version. It's not representative of full programs. Um, because you would find other things as well around, but uh, I just haven't represented it for, for simplicity. Uh, digital problem solving, so again, engineers do a lot of subject specific um, uh, investigations, so they use a, a wide range of software, so I think that's represented mm -hmm. as well. Whereas in, in management, um, what uh, management does, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute, I'll perhaps show it in, in a minute in the next slide. So that, that's what one of my findings was. So basically I think what I'm saying is that if we get at what makes the discipline tick and what are the characteristics, then it will also help us ways in um, articulating with the program team of, of where we could start making sure that you definitely got that covered or, or perhaps you're missing something. But again, the question around significant transformations and disruption can also be another way of checking whether, oh, have you got anything that's perhaps entered recently that you haven't yet got in your program? 
So um, I have in, again in my thesis um, a longer description. So what I picked out as the signature digital capabilities in disciplines. So engineering, I talked about the open-ended collaborative projects. So many times if you see photos of students being digitally capable, they're usually a lone student sitting in front of the laptop. If, if you, if you, so, and I, I went and observed some of the engineering classes as well, and this is, I mean, this is not my photo, obviously, because it's Oregon, but that's, that's typical of the engineering students. That was, you, you would see analog stuff, you would see computers, and always a gang of students around, and I think that these things are, are important to capture. Um, the other one, I mentioned that they use a lot of simulation. And that was a competition, that's why everyone is so happy they won something. Um, simulation and modeling with graphs is, is another one. And, and I don't have time to talk about this, uh, but th they are creators of technology engineers. And that's an interesting thing that perhaps in the, in the GIS model is not captured that it's th this is a discipline where they actually create technology. I mean, also others as well. Uh, in terms of management, so I've done the same, I've identified perhaps signature areas and, and the first one is what I would pick out. So what managers do is collect information and data, analyze it, interpret it and communicate it. And all, the, all of these things happen with various digital tools. So again, it's not, it's, it's, it's perhaps is less signature because I guess all academics do some of that, but it's how they do it perhaps is what's signature. And um, the other thing I would mention is that in terms of sub-disciplines, so once you start uh, looking into a discipline, you immediately see the sub-disciplines. So when I talk to engineers, for instance, they don't really do social media because they would see it unprofessional if they open up, I don't know, confidential projects and talk about them on social media or people wouldn't take them seriously. But if you go to automotive sports, they, they have to live on social media because of the sponsors. They have to um, credit the sponsor. So they do a lot more on social media. Same with, with management. In marketing, again, social media presence is a must. And not just presence, but looking at how it all works for them. Um, implications for curriculum design. Just very quickly, that it, it seems that authentic digitally mediated tasks are very effective. And um, the role of universities partly to expose students to industry level software, so when they go out they, they know how to use this, but also the adaptability. So when they are faced with unfamiliar tools, students then they are able to pick things up. And that duality can cause sometimes tensions as well because students sometimes want to be told how to be trained on particular software. So that, that's an interesting discussion. And I think someone uh, mentioned this yesterday, critical reflection on, so students sometimes can be over or underconfident in their um, assessment of their own digital capabilities. And that's why um, critical reflection as part of assessment and teaching learning activities is important. Okay, then finally, one of the things, and I think if you were in Wendy's session yesterday, that came out really, um, so sim I found similar things, that when we look at um, learning outcomes, the digital can be quite hidden or implicit, and they need interpretations, and it's really, a lot of times, it's in the assessment criteria when we see the digital capabilities sort of spelled out, and that's why I'm suggesting signature assessments might be a better way of capturing that, which then leads on to authentic assessment, really. Okay, I won't have time for that. And finally, just in the last bit, uh, just to summarize that uh, my research process is really, the outcome is what, the one takeaway I wanted to share with you. So I was looking at the curriculum and comparing um, people in the workplace and what happens in the curriculum, and then looked at it from one lens, the digital capability framework, what digital practice is going on, uh, looked at the, the aspect of the disciplines and then triangulated it to, to help people work out uh, what may be gaps and I've identified some in engineering and management as well in my study. And these are the questions that you've seen earlier is, as my, um, what is it, you, the, the, the backbone of what, what's the, the sort of questions that might be useful to ask of others. and. Uh, I also developed a work sh wor workshop um, 
what is it, a tool that uh, we, can, we have used in, in workshops to, again, work with staff on, on this. And I think this is what I, I had time for. <laughs> so thank you very much for listening, and, and I, I, I'm happy to respond to any questions if you have any. Any questions? You won't have to ask. Not a real, not a real question. I just wondered, have you, are you publishing this somewhere? Can we yeah, read it? I, that's all my. That's my next job. Yeah. Or, or if not, is, is I, it so this is. I've uploaded the. I, I've uploaded the um, slides to slide share, which I tweeted. Hopefully, it's it's appeared. Uh, but yeah, I will be publishing it, and my PhD will be available as well. Okay, I'm happy you. to, yeah, happy to share literature and things like that. Okay, thank yeah. you. I mean, one of the things as a take-home, if you wanted to uh, download the the slide share, uh, one of the things I did in my studies is basically trying to make a sense of of my findings and what it all means. Is and it's really helped me. Is actually did a poem. Of, of each of the discipline and just to figure out what the people were saying to me. So I put it in a poem, and if anyone wants to listen to it, either now or later, um, that, that's, that's yours, and I did the same for management. But if anyone, uh, I, actually it really helped me to put, to kind of crystallize what I was hearing from people. And I think the engineers quite liked it. They said they might do it as an activity with their students to ask them to write a poem of what engineering is. <laughs> so, I mean, do you want to listen? Or it's 42 seconds. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Do you, my lovely assistant? <laughs> we open boxes, pull things apart. Bikes, trimmers, spark plugs, cars. We simulate and model with graphs, solve problems with applied maths. We collaborate from day one on all things complex and human. We draw on global resources, join forces, just like in the real world. Although MATLAB, Simulink and CAD are core, you don't need to be the master of all. After baptism by a five-day wildfire, fight your way through the digital mire, armed only with wit and the need to inquire, just like in the real world. What a lovely way to finish. <laughs>